The US Supreme Court says you can register offensive trademarks? Does this mean you can register and find out here on Wheels and Gavels. Brunetti created a fashion line named, well, spelled F-U-C-T. But the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office denied him a trademark. In the case of Yanku versus Brunetti, what's at issue is whether or not the Trademark Office should be required to register marks that are immoral or scandalous. Our story begins with Eric Brunetti a graffiti artist, director, and clothing designer who started a provocative streetwear clothing line in 1990 using the acronym F-U-C-T, Friends You Can't Trust. His brand was started with professional skateboarder Natus Kalpas. I'm not familiar, uh, but uh, he chose F-U-C-T because it was eye-catching, provocative, and humorous. He wanted people to question his pronunciation. He built the brand as a reflection of our culture, as an anti-government, anti-religion form of modern streetwear. The designs used business logos and pop culture to make a rebellious statement. Brunetti waited almost 20 years to apply for a trademark. However, in 2010, Brunetti noticed a number of knockoffs and counterfeits of his brand being sold online. Essentially, it was the public demand for his brand and its popularity that led him to seek government protection in the first place. In fact, in 2009, it seems an unrelated business owner attempted to register the trademark F-U-C-T for his clothing. The application was eventually abandoned after the USPTO said, no way Jose, and that's moral. Uh, but Brunetti's own application followed a couple of years after that. The difference was Brunetti wasn't afraid to fight the USPTO tooth and nail. Brunetti's application was denied in 2013 and was appealed to the Trademark Trial and Appeal Board. Uh, the appeal board affirmed the trademark's refusal in 2014, stating the mark was a total vulgar highly offensive, with decidedly negative sexual connotations. What's more, the appeal board went through Brunetti's website and found how the mark was essentially used. They stated that the products were nihilistic and antisocial or even misogynistic. Uh, in any case, the USPTO and the appeal board said the mark was unregisterable. No way, not happening, not ever. Undeterred, Brunetti appealed the decision to the Federal Circuit and argued the prohibition of his mark violated his free speech. The court agreed and the U.S. Supreme Court took notice and eventually granted certiorari for this case. Sir, you're out of order. Uh, the attorney here, I'm wanting to fire him. What do you call that machine? I don't know what we're yelling about! To decipher the meaning of immoral and scandalous, the Supreme Court turned to some standard dictionary definitions. Immoral is often defined as inconsistent with rectitude, purity, or good morals, whereas scandalous is defined as giving offense to the conscience or moral feelings. The court viewed these definitions as providing the basis for allowing marks when they accord with society's sense of decency or propriety. But when you put the terms side by side, you still get two viewpoints. The viewpoint of those that want to conform with conventional morals and those hostile to those morals, or the customers of the FECT brand. The government, aka the USPTO, clearly prefers one of these viewpoints and makes decisions in favor of the conforming trademarks. This is unconstitutional. And what's more, it can lead to widely inconsistent results. The Supreme Court cited specific examples of how the USPTO rejects certain marks but accepts others. For example, the USPTO rejected uh, you can't spell healthcare without THC, marijuana cola, bong hits for Jesus, Madonna for wine, and Al Qaeda. Someone just try to register Al Qaeda, I guess. But it allowed marks for praise the Lord, Jesus died for you as well as a mark uh, for the War on Terror Memorial. Essentially, the court found a clear bias in what marks the USPTO consistently rejected. Furthermore, how do we decide what society views as moral? Is trademarking say yes to abortion immoral? What about marks involving the LGBT community? I'm sure there are some that find it immoral based on their Christian beliefs. Wheel of morality, turn, turn, turn. Tell us the lesson that we should learn. And the moral of today's show is, win a free trip to Tahiti. 
The governments essentially argue that there are certain words that are so bad that they require no viewpoint analysis whatsoever. We all know what words shouldn't be said in front of children. These are words that are identified almost universally as bad words regardless of your viewpoint. The government pleaded to salvage the statute and narrow it so that it can still be constitutional, but alas, the court said it couldn't rewrite the statute. That's a job for the legislature. We know what scandalous or immoral means in the statute. There's no ambiguity that the court could interpret. The statue on its face discriminates based on viewpoint. If, if you lose this case, do you think the uh, uh, trademark office would be able to deny registration to marks on the grounds that they're obscene? Well, I, I, I think there are certainly ways. And if the court struck down the statute on its face on the ground that it was substantially overbroad, then no, I don't think that there is any other provision that the, of the Trademark Act. It, it seems and this is, as we established, this is a facial challenge. Right. Okay, so if you lose, then you would not be able to restrict trademarks on the ground that they're obscene. I, th I, think, that's, I think that's correct. And, and just so I could understand, you're asking us to narrow this statute to exactly what? To marks that are offensive, shocking to a substantial segment of the public because of their mode of expression, independent of any views that they may express. Now, this is sort of an interesting decision because it sparked a lot of different opinions. Uh, the decision actually created five separate opinions, each highlighting different concerns about what this case will mean for trademark law and the United States morals going forward. Chief Justice Roberts highlighted that federal trademark registration is a government benefit. It isn't something that restricts free speech, but rather a privilege granted by the government. Every time the government accepts a vulgar trademark, it is associating itself with the vulgarity, and the government shouldn't reward such vulgarity with a federal trademark. Justice Alito called viewpoint discrimination as poison to a free society. He didn't argue for any type of morality, but identified how the government could abuse the statute for illegitimate ends. It's up to Congress to re rewrite the law and remove the viewpoint language and perhaps the concept of morality altogether. Justice Breyer tried to equate the trademark register to a limited public forum, basically something like a library or a school or a jail, where speech can be limited to a certain class of speech, like only school-related speech at a public school. He argued that the government has a compelling interest in restricting vulgar speech and that this interest outweighs any First Amendment restrictions. He basically say, said the trademark owner isn't losing much by being denied registration, but by granting the trademark, the government is promoting a mark that will disrupt commerce, create fights on the streets, a mother will see a vulgar word on a t-shirt and be outraged, leading to an altercation with the owner of the shirt. Breyer argues we have to protect the sensibilities of children particularly with scandalous marks, which he views as the profane words. Breyer conceded on the immoral marks, like bong hits for Jesus or something similar. Those are too viewpoint based, but uh, certain marks like F yourself shouldn't be allowed. Finally, the business owners can still enjoy common law trademark protection, although this does involve geographical limits and is often more costly to enforce. Federal registration also grants a presumption of validity and shifts the burden of proof to the infringer. So often, business owners prefer federal registration without a doubt. Finally, Justice Sotomayor expressed her concern that the court just opened the floodgates. All hell's about to break loose, dogs and cats living together. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. The USPTO can't deny any mark anymore due to profanity, nudity, offensiveness. We can register anything we want at this point. Sotomayor argued the court should have narrowed the statute and applied it only to indecent, shocking, or generally offensive marks. The FUs, or the Go F Yourself trademarks. The marks that are only providing shock value. The words that create a visceral reaction. A business can express the same viewpoint without using profanity. You want to say you dislike broccoli? You can trademark I hate broccoli or hate broccoli, but not F broccoli. Put it in your mouth and just eat it. Take God, a I hate it. I don't care whether you hate it. You said Michael. you'd do it. Finally, the court has a duty based on statutory principle to try to interpret a statute in any way to allow it to remain constitutional, something Sotomayor says the court failed to do in this case when it didn't limit the statute 
to curse words and profanity. So that's the case in an oversized nutshell. Did the court get it right? Here are my thoughts. Trademark protection is about protecting a business owner's identity and allowing consumers to identify the source of their products. The whole reason Brunetti sought registration is because someone was copying his brand and the customers were the ones being hurt. Hypothetically, let's say I paid $500 for an authentic FUCT shirt and got a counterfeit shirt that was cheaply made with some kind of cancer inducing chemicals in it from someone who was copying the brand. I would be the one that was hurt in this situation. Whether Brunetti uh, has a trademark or not doesn't affect the fact that I'm being hurt, but if he has a federally registered trademark, he has a better chance of fighting these kinds of infringers. Brunetti can try to exercise common law trademark rights, but it's an uphill battle which is costly and time consuming. Secondly, whether the government grants or denies trademark registration, it doesn't affect what people will put on t-shirts and other items. The court makes it seem as if by, by allowing this decision, they are somehow going to lead to people walking on the streets with all kinds of different curse words. That's already been out there. Nothing's changing with this decision. Brunetti could have always put curse words on his clothes, and maybe only put F-U-C-T on a tag or a label that nobody really sees. The court's arguments about protecting the kids are irrelevant to the realities of business. Will there be an increase in explicit trademark registration? Probably, yes, at least for a few years since all the Brunettis of the country will suddenly apply to register their offensive marks. But it's not the government's place to control these expressions. Let the free market control what goes on clothing. If we're really concerned with morality, let public opinion, the dollars we spend on things, let that control what we see on clothes when we leave the house. If people are offended, they'll make it known through Twitter and by petitions and however else they can. Finding out an offensive shirt also has an offensive trademark won't make much of a difference in terms of public sentiment. Finally, how can we really limit the statute as Sotomayor and Breyer sort of argue? How is the government supposed to decide what even constitutes profanity? Language is a constantly changing uh, form of communication. People are offended by some words but not others. How do we draw the line? Is registering shit happens okay? Or piss off? Maybe? Probably? Is the F or C word too much? How do we draw the line? Is it like the uh, rating systems for video games? Is it like uh, when we see movies? PG-13 trademarks are okay, but rated R trademarks aren't okay? It all seems very arbitrary. What if we go back 50 years? Are the answers the same in terms of if shit happens? Is that okay 50 years ago? Probably not. What if we go to the future 50 years? Maybe certain words won't have the same meanings. And maybe people need to register their trademarks now to get ahead in the business. Maybe people like Brunetti were ahead of their time. F-U-C-T was arguably a much more offensive mark in 1990, but now, maybe it's just me, but I don't see the big deal. In fact, nearly every video or news site isn't afraid to write the mark in their title. If this is such an offensive term, we're not afraid to put it on news sites and YouTube, but we're afraid to see it on a t-shirt? What's the difference in terms of the kids? What's the difference in terms of exposure? The government simply isn't in touch with what is even considered profane. Leave it to, the com leave it to commerce, leave it to the public to decide. Let people say what they want to say and say it however they want to say it. That's the whole idea of free speech, and that's why this case resulted in the decision that it did and why 1052A is unconstitutional in terms of disparaging marks, scandalous marks, and immoral marks. Till next time, this is Reels and Gavels. Tune in. Let's see what happens.